Hey gang, Scott here. Another improvement in Lightroom Classic made by Adobe in late 2025, the variance slider in the color mixer. This is gonna be your new best friend for really fine tuning color adjustments uh, in your photos. Uh, what I wanna do is break this down into, well, where's the slider, what is it, how does it work? Just the fundamentals, and we'll use a color grid to do that. And then I'll show you a couple of examples from landscape photography where you can leverage variance. So let's just dive right in. So the variance slider, let's start with just understanding how this thing works. The slider is in the color mixer area. And for this example, let me just grab a color. I'll choose yellow, just a straight up basic yellow color. And we have hue, saturation, luminance. Those sliders have been there all the time. And then variance. If you used camera raw in Photoshop, you will have seen this slider before. Well, now we have it in Lightroom Classic. Uh, so, you know, we've chosen yellow here and like we can do with the, the point color portion of the color mixer, let's just shift this maybe a little toward orange, right? And so we see that the yellow is a little bit more orange. The orange got richer. The green got a little bit you know, dimmer there. And we saw some kind of change you know, before and after. Well, now we have variance. What does variance mean? For the color I've selected, yellow, do I want other colors that are similar to my selected color to be more like my selection or less like my selection. Phrased another way, if I want other colors nearby what I've selected to be more varied, increased variance, you're increasing color contrast. The reverse side of that, I want other colors to be less varied. I'm moving more toward a monochromatic look, you know, less variance. So the slider here, as I push it to the right, I'm gonna get an increase in the variance. Now before that slider, and then after that slider, you know, check out what's going on, especially notice it with the solid squares down here, orange, yellow, and green. Before that, the orange is, well, pretty darn you know, uh, orange, a little bit of yellow in there. The green is green, but as I push them, they get intensified. I am saying, I've chosen yellow. Other colors that surround it make them less like yellow, more variance, more color contrast. And so now with that variance, and especially in the color bars, here you see this is much more of an orange tone than it was previously. And in fact, we can take the hue away and just say, I want more color contrast, right? I've got that control here. In the reverse direction, let's say I've chosen yellow as we have before, I've shifted that a little bit toward orange, but I want less variance. I want to have things be more like the color sample I've made. And as I push this, all the way to the left. Again, paying attention to these squares here. We're particularly noticing it in the orange space where no variance whatsoever. As I push variance to the left, the orange is becoming a little more like yellow. And we see that somewhat in the greens. Uh, but since you know we've already shifted things toward orange, we're already shifting left in this photo. So we're, we're or photo, this, this grid. So we're not seeing that impact as much. But once again, if I just have no hue change, no saturation, no luminance, as I push variance to the left, we're seeing that for the sample color I have, I want other colors around it to be more like what I've chosen, less variance. Summed up, more color contrast to the right, less color contrast to the left, all with respect to the swatch you've chosen. And you can do this for a variety of colors. I can choose blue and say, you know, I want, I want this to be very saturated. Maybe I want to shift it toward purple, but uh, I want more variance. And that's different distinctly from what I've done with yellow. Maybe I said yellow, I want to do something different. I want to, you know, take the, let's take the saturation almost all the way down. Let's take the luminance all the way down. I'm playing with the variance. I'm only affecting in this uh, you know, example, the, the left side of the color. So I can do this per color swatch. All right, great. We understand what variance is doing for us, letting us have yet another level of control over color contrast. How do we put that into practice? You know, what are some examples? I'm a landscape photographer. I'll show you landscape examples. I've uh, seen other videos and uh, people that do portrait work that they like using this for skin tones, you know, smooth out uh, you know, different tones of skin so things are a little more uh, uniform for a, a portrait subject. But let's look at a landscape here. We got some fall color. And you know, what might I do with this? Um, 
let's again pick a reference color. Um, as I look around here, I've got like something in the oranges bordering on yellow, some brighter yellows. There's even some greens out in here. Um, I'll pick something in that yellow area again. We'll, so we'll stick with yellow for our, our samples. This is like an orangey yellow. And what might I do? Well, I want that maybe to be a little bit more orange in my example. Uh, I don't really want to play around with saturation and luminance, but now that I have variants, it's like, well, without having to pick other colors, like what if I want more greens to show up? I push variants all the way to the right. And you know, now, look, I've, I've got this 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 part of uh, you know other aspens in the background there have shown up. The greens are down here. The greens are popping up. I'm getting more color uh, separation there. I'm mean, getting color contrast there just by virtue of using the variance slider. And I still can do all sorts of other things here, like with the greens down in here. That's kind of a yellowish green. Maybe I want that to be a little more green. Visualize the range back the range off so it's even affecting less. You know, I have all the same types of controls that we had before, um, going back to my yellow square, but we have you know, this increased control and variance. If I wanted the opposite, I said, you know, I really want to lean into that yellow orange tone. I can take variance to the left, and just make this very, uh, you know, very bright, you know, very amber toned photo. Now, this is what it was before these changes. This is what it was after. I think for my taste, I kind of like a little bit more of that orange in there. So I'll leave my shifting to the yellows toward orange, a little more variance to bring up the greens. That's a nice look. Um, let's look at a second example, you know, things that we deal with, like with, with skies in uh, landscape photography, you know, trying to get the blues to be exactly what you want them to be. And the reason I want to show you a sky is also because all this control is also available with masks. We have this in the masking area. So as you're making selections in the photo, you can do all of this level of control on specific portions of your photo. You don't have to work just globally. This photo here, a pretty nice looking blue sky, a little bit of reflection in the water. And if I were to do something with the color mixer, we're saying, okay, I want to grab that, that blue and maybe I want to uh, saturate it more, um, you know, or, or maybe darken it a little bit, but notice the reflections in the foreground before and after. I kind of don't like that. I, I, I like the brighter look that's there. And so instead of doing this with the global color mixer, I can come into the masking area so, you know, give me the sky. I've got my sky now. Point color. Choose that blue. And now I say I want this to be a little bit of a different blue, maybe a little more saturated. And I saw that variant slider where I want either more color separation, I want a little bit less. In this case, I'm probably going to go just slightly less to, to smooth out anything that might uh, represent, you know, banding or so forth. If you ever work with a, a polarizer and you're using a really wide angle and you get kind of like a, an interesting darkening there, you know, variance can help you out smoothing that out as well. Uh, the point here is you've got this control with all of the masking tools, whatever color area you're working on. Any selection that you make, any color that you're working with, you've got variants there. You can do it globally, you can do it locally per selection. Uh, that's what variance is. It's a really nice, powerful tool for fine tuning your color control. Got any other questions? Go ahead and drop them below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.